Bonne le calme, mon chalins. On Valentine's Day of this year, a 19-year-old student named Nicholas de Jesus Cruz entered Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School with an assault rifle and took the lives of 17 individuals, students and teachers, and fort injured 14 others. The shooter discarded his gear at the scene to escape amidst the uh, fleeing students, heading to a nearby Subway restaurant before being apprehended walking down a residential street more than an hour after the shooting. Words escape me when trying to describe it in any more than bare facts. This act by a mentally disturbed individual shook me so greatly, I avoided talking on the subject for some time, instead waiting for the facts to come out and details to arise. Now that they have, however, I find myself angry. Not at Nicholas Cruz, though that anger certainly exists, but rather at the Broward County Sheriff's Department and Broward County school officials. This story does not begin with a 19-year-old delinquent, or even reports of his violent behaviors as a 17-year-old from two years prior, but rather it begins with the 2012 program implemented in Broward County as a response to the political fervor that existed at the time over the school to prison pipeline, as it was called. Miami County and Broward County before that year were setting records with the number of black and Hispanic students being suspended or arrested through zero tolerance policies. But the Obama administration made suggestions on as to how this problem could be solved and his suggestions were taken. On paper, it looked quite nice. Described in Broward County as the Collaborative Agreement on School Discipline, it was a plan to no longer refer students to the police for nonviolent misdemeanors, including theft of less than $300, vandalism of less than $1,000, trespassing, criminal mischief, gambling, harassment, possession of alcohol, marijuana, or drug paraphernalia, obstructing justice without violence, and perhaps most importantly, threats. Instead, these students would be referred to counseling and mentoring programs within the community, in addition to continuity of education and daily interactions with school officials. It's a pretty horrifying list of crimes which would not be referred to the police or prosecuted. However, from internal affairs investigations in 2012 and 2013, we quickly discover that Miami-Dade and Broward counties this list would not be the only crimes which would be ignored. Officers were instructed by school officials and the Sheriff's Department to not file theft reports, instead collecting stolen items and reporting them as found evidence, to not file reports on threats of violence within the school, and far, far more. It seemed like a miracle on the surface to those not paying attention to internal affairs investigations. Arrests and suspensions had fallen approximately 60% within the two counties, leading to people to think, and the school officials to report, that the collective agreement on school discipline was working, that crime was falling within the schools. This couldn't be further than the from the truth, though. Crime had remained the same, but without police reports on these crimes, the statistics became more and more skewed from the reality. So long as the police did not document the crimes being committed and left the criminals in the hands of the school officials and community services, they will be able to report lower rates of crime in schools. Fast forward to February 5th, 2016, when an anonymous caller reported to Broward County Sheriff's Office that the then 17-year-old Nicholas Cruz had made a threat to shoot up a school, his school, on Instagram complete with a photo of him holding guns, later, to be, later discovered to be BB guns. The information was forwarded to Sheriff's Deputy Scott Peterson, a school resource officer at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, but no disciplinary action was taken. Remember that name, by the way, Scott Peterson. It becomes important. On September 23rd, 2016, Deputy Scott Peterson is given another report, this time by a peer counselor at the school, that Nicholas Cruz had ingested gasoline in a possible suicide attempt, as well as had been cutting himself. He was not referred for involuntary commission to a mental health facility, and instead the high school said it would conduct a threat assessment. 
Five days later, on September 28th, an investigator with the Florida Department of Children and Families made the judgment that Nicholas Cruz was stable, despite the cuts on his arms. Just shy of a year later, on September 25th of 2017, a YouTube user with the display name of Nicholas Cruz posted a comment saying he wanted to become a professional school shooter. The comment was reported to the FBI office in Mississippi, but no connection was made to the student in Broward County. On November 1st, 2017, the cousin of Nicholas Cruz's mother calls Broward Sheriff's Office to report that Nicholas Cruz has weapons and asks them to take them from the now adult Cruz. The weapons were not confiscated by the Sheriff's Office. Instead, they were taken by a close family friend. On November 29th, 2017, after the death of Cruz's mother, the family that had taken him in called the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office to report a fight between Cruz and their own son in which Cruz had threatened to get his gun and come back, and that he had put the gun to others' heads in the past. Once he comes down, however, the family states to the police that they do not want him arrested. On November 30th, 2017, Broward Sheriff's Office receives an anonymous call from Massachusetts, wishing to report that Nicholas Cruz is bragging about collecting guns and knives online expressing concern over Cruz becoming a school shooter in the making. Broward Sheriff's Office advises the caller to contact the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office. On January 5th, 2018, a caller to the FBI's tip line reported that Cruz had expressed a desire to kill people and might attempt a school shooting, but this information was never passed on to the FBI's office in Miami. And on February 14th, 2018, when Nicholas Cruz entered the school with an assault rifle, the, Shepity, uh, the Sheriff Deputy Scott Peterson, assigned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School as a school resource officer, the same Deputy Scott Peterson who had received reports from anonymous calls and other sources about the risk Nicholas Cruz posed to those around him in the school, remained outside with three other Sheriff's deputies hiding behind their vehicles, making no attempt to confront the shooter. It wasn't until Coral Springs and Sunrise police officers arrived on scene that anyone entered the building. Nicholas Cruz was a mentally disturbed student, behind by at least a year in school, that everyone around recognized as a violent powder keg ready to burst. In the aftermath of the shooting, many students reported that this came as no surprise. Just this weekend, Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel praised the leadership of his deputies, leadership that was completely absent for years with regards to this entire situation, which had been developing for years under their watch. Leadership was, which was not to be found in any of the deputies who remained hidden like cowards behind their police cruisers with guns drawn while the shooting took place inside. But this cowardice is to be expected from the deputies, who had for six years been told not to file reports, to falsify reports in order to prevent crimes from being registered in the statistics against the city to not arrest students and instead leave them in the hands of the school officials and sit on their asses as crimes ran rampant. It will come as no surprise to anyone from Broward or Miami-Dade counties that such a thing could occur. The police corruption in these counties is quite well known amongst their residents. But the blood of those 17 students is now on their hands and all the Broward County Sheriff's Office is doing is taking credit for the majority of rescue efforts, despite rescue efforts being headed up by Coral Springs Police Department outside of their own jurisdiction. And they're allowing Scott Peterson to resign without even a proper investigation into his negligence or possible corruption. Scott Peterson, Scott Israel, and the rest of the Broward County Sheriff's Office and school officials have allowed student crime to go unchecked, 
to the point where a student was able to enter the school with an assault rifle and police officers from outside their jurisdiction had to handle the situation rather than the sheriff's deputy who was stationed at the school. This kind of corruption and negligence cannot go unaddressed. The students in Broward County and the families of the victims of the so-called Valentine's Day Massacre deserve better. They deserve justice, not only with regards to Nicholas Cruz, but with regards to the deputies and officers who allowed Nicholas Cruz to go unchecked amongst a myriad of reports as to his violent instability. <laughs>